All right, we now welcome on to Inside TBT from Best Virginia, Deshaun Butler. Deshaun, welcome to the show. We are happy to have you. I'm happy to be here, Andrew. I appreciate you guys having me on. And Joey, excuse me, sorry. <laughs> hey, you're good. Um, I'm, I'm co commonly known as the forgotten one, Joey Lane. But Really? Oh, that's a, that's a terrible nickname, bro. No, no. <laughs> really? It's quite the opposite, actually. <laughs> anyways. We, we were just talking before the show started. You're, you're a pro at this. Like, you don't need any, any words of encouragement right before we get going. You're, you're used to this podcasting stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. The uh, Final Forecast podcast is pretty uh, uh, demanding in uh, episodes. So I had to get really uh, accustomed to what I was doing very fast. So. I got to say, when it comes to TBT coverage, Final Forecast, second best podcast out there. Mm, interesting. Who's the first? <laughs> Inside <laughs> TBT, <laughs> baby. I just want to see if you guys are going to give me the edge because I was a guest. That's a <laughs> We're gonna, I'm going to hit you. I'm going to hit you with a hard nose first question. You ready? Yeah. All right. You guys start off with a quote unquote rivalry game in round one yeah. against Heard That, the Marshall alumni. What are your yeah. thoughts on that? Oh, that's cool. I mean, I. I don't know. I guess I personally don't look at it as a rivalry game, but I mean, there are from a uh, majority of the guys on your team are from the state and we played against the majority of these guys before as well. Like I'm excited. I don't know. It's, it's always got hate getting, I mean, as much as I would love to get a buy, I I'd like to play first and get a, get a, uh, you know, leg up on that, that aspect of the game, just see how our chemistry has grown a little bit before other teams. I got that boss. So it's uh it's the old rest versus rust debate, especially in, you know, when you're coming off quarantine, do you think you – you kind of touched on it. Do you look at it as an advantage, especially if you win? You got to win. Do you look at it as an advantage, having a game under your belt going to that second game? Well, it's always, it always feels better. I mean, as opposed to you, you have your first game. I don't know uh, how everybody else feels, I guess. Like, the superheroes don't really get nervous, I guess, when they play or get jitters or anything like that. But, like, you get a little nervousness on your first game of a, of a tournament, I would assume. So just like I want to, I want to say nervousness more or less. It's just like you're wanting to see how your team's going to do more or less. So you might oh, be a little itchy, antsy, whatever the case may be. Things might might not be timed right. A whole bunch of that stuff. So us, you know, having these kind of game, this game playing first is it's a it can be an advantage for both teams if they like whoever wins because you know you don't have that other team will though. We played so so. That'll help in terms of getting ready for the next game. But overall, are, are you in good shape? Yeah. I mean, I've been running and working out, and this doesn't stop. This is what I do for a living. So I got to well, figure out a way to do it in a, a different environment, but I, I, it has to get done. Follow-up question to that. Are you in full-court press shape? Well, that was never a shape I was in. So <laughs> we have got we have a ton of guys, which is fun. But we have a ton of guys on our team that are in in that kind of shape, and they stay in that kind of shape. So, kudos to those guys. I'll be the guy in the back of the press, like calling out stuff. Where that's what you're the, that's you're the center fielder. You're the yeah. you're pointing out all the coverages. You're the quarterback at the back of the defense. I, I hear you. That was that was me as well. I'm not exactly. up there with the fast. Chances are you'll hear me more than you see me doing anything. So that's Absolutely. perfect for me. I gotta, that for me. I gotta, I gotta ask you because we've talked about it on this podcast. Whenever we talk about Best Virginia, and you're talking about being in shape, can we talk about the treadmill, please? Oh, I mean, what do you want to know? It's... I just want, I just want a story, just something. I mean, it's just like I. So I played at Ohio State, and we had yeah, our own awesome. the treadmill. We we would push a sled to half court and back. You know, it gets you a little tired. You don't want to yeah, do definitely. it, definitely. But at the same time, like, it's not gonna kill you. Whereas yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the treadmill, yeah, that might kill you. I just want a story. Yeah. That's all. Also, uh, we had – well, we have numerous stories because the treadmill is involved in a lot of our practices normally. I don't know. Now these guys are like, – I think hugs are getting a little soft. But now, like when I was in college, the treadmill ran the entire – almost the entire practice until we got to like shooting, like group shooting for guards and in the bigs and the wings. So the, the treadmill basically ran for like an hour and a half, an hour. <laughs> and – we start our practices with a lot of one-on-one -on -one defensive drills, then to two-on-two, -two, then shell. Uh, we have a different shell drill that we do as well, where we add like two extra people offensively to us. And then we have uh, our team stuff after that. And the treadmill's just going. So like, you can get the treadmill. We have rules and laws for the team. So getting opposite 
is important on offense or rebounds. And if you're not there, the coach will ask you, like, are you there? Were you, at, were you opposite? And he, he'd say, you could say, oh, yes. And then you'd be like, all right, cool. You were opposite, fine. But if you found that you were lying, you always had two to three. And I used to always lie if they, if they asked me. You got to elaborate on what two to three means. Does that mean? Uh, yeah, so this is, uh, this is one, one rep of this is 44 seconds, 15 miles per hour. So <laughs> it's running. So like, it's like one of those things where you're in fear of the entire practice. Like you're almost oh. like you're playing in fear in a sense. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because like, he's like, all right, cool. You didn't take this charge, and this is a charge drill. You didn't take it properly. You didn't get from sideline to sideline. Go on the treadmill, and as soon as you're done, you're the first person back in the drill. Every do you, time. Do you get like defense, all that stuff? <laughs> Didn't matter. You were always first back in. So wait, so is every you said two to three. So is that eighty-eight seconds? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like so, like I lied one time. He was like, "Where are you opposite?" And I was like, "Yeah." He goes, "Give him two for lying." Oh. And then the, the, the strength coach has been. He stays by the treadmill because that's he's in charge of. That's his job. Conditioning. So the manager is like two managers to make sure you don't fall off or anything like that. And uh, then there's the uh, strength coach there keeping your time. And it's, it's, a, it's a good time. For the listeners at home, um, our buddy over here said 15 miles per hour. If you wanted to run a 530 mile, which is your haul, yeah. your sprinter, yeah, yeah. that's, that's like, 10.4 the on the yeah. truck. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> it's insane. So yeah. I, I got I to ask another question because I'm fascinated by it. Like Andrew knows, like I'm fascinated by it. Yeah, man. Between it, that and the tread, I mean, between the treadmill and a and tire, you can uh, you can change your life. The tire yeah. is a whole other story, but yeah, uh, yeah. I gotta ask: Did walk-ons have to go on the treadmill too? Of course. What are you talking about? Just making sure. Hey, everybody, everyone, no one was exempt. The only time walk-ons that were exempt was when we broke down the the initial play of a team the very first time. Okay. But then, even then, though, like in practice, like they were exempt. But like when we had scouts for games, they weren't exempt. They were like the first they had to do everything that's so they have it the worst at our school the walk-ons get it the worst okay so that's why i the way i looked at was i only had to do the sled a handful of times whereas the other guys are doing Uh, it 50 times oh i could not i couldn't have been a walk-on here at w no no yeah i that's i i've heard so many stories because there was a walk-on at west virginia who ended up transferring to ohio state not to play Mm -hmm. basketball but we were short on guys one year when we got a new coaching staff so he joined the team really good year was this and he was, he was, he was talking so much about the West Virginia practices. He did everything until the season started, and then he quit. I was like, "Dude, are you insane?" What year was this? He, it would have been 2014, 15. 14, 15. Transfer from W. I can't even think of it. His name was Matt Lehman. Ah, uh, no, I don't know him. <laughs> Good player from Columbus. Anyway, shout out to Matt. That's my guy. Well, shout out to Matt. I sorry, I didn't even apologize, it's, Matt. No, no. So, I feel like an ass now. <laughs> it's like, yo, I, I don't know. I feel terrible now. Oh no, it's okay. I just that's that's all the tired time. That's all or the all the treadmill time we have on the on the show. I just had to, I, you talked about being in shape. I'm just I'm just glad yeah. you guys don't have treadmills in your house. Like, yeah, I, I, I can't do that. I have terrible knees right now. I can't be on a treadmill. You kidding me? That kill me. <laughs> So we know that uh, we know that uh, Hugs was thinking about coaching. It seems like the quarantine and how that's going to roll has kind of thrown a little bit of a wrench in there. Are yeah, there definitely. Any, any other former players, either from West Virginia or your teammates, that you guys were kind of recruiting, hoping to get on this team that didn't end up working out? Everybody. I mean, we talked to – like, we're in a unique scenario where, obviously, we're the oldest on the team. And I'm, I want to say I'm maybe the oldest on the team, which – surprise but uh like 2010 and on we've done a good job of uh, and our coach actually Huggins has done a great job at having the uh, alumni come back and work out that was like one of the things that we were all we never we we never did they never did it before us either until he got there so he started having alumni alumni come back he started getting guys that played for him before to come and visit in town so we could meet these guys so on and so forth and from I mean, that's just, like, the culture here in general. So it wasn't too easy to, like – I mean, it wasn't too hard, excuse me, to, like, reach out to people because we see these guys all the time, every summer if we could. So it's not, like, that big a deal. Like, we talked to Gary Brown. We talked to Devin Ebanks, Joe Alexander, Alex Roth, like, all these guys that can't be on the team now because either they're playing right now or they have obligations uh, for a national team and so on and so forth. So, like, like, we have the guys we could possibly get. 
except like Devin and stuff. So. <laughs> I think it's pretty amazing that the West Virginia, I mean, you guys are all West Virginia guys, right? Yeah. There's, there's no other team, no other alumni team, maybe Syracuse. And yeah. Andrew, you can tell me if I'm wrong, that has a complete alumni team. I mean, I wouldn't, well, I don't see why they, they should just call it like the name of the school and then say recreation. That'd be dope. I think that's tough. Like, wouldn't Ooh, it be awesome? Yeah. And then we could just keep like the alumni as the alumni. You could use that in your name. You can't use the alumni and you have somebody else from another school. Yeah, like, like an intramural team. Yeah, yeah, basically, that'd be pretty, that's an actually dope name. I think, see, everybody, <laughs> Joey Lane just came up with that, by the way. He West wants to Virginia call your teams intramural. intramural teams. And you guys got reversible jerseys. They're like, <laughs> nothing else. Just the numbers. Oh, man. So of, of all those guys that maybe, you know, didn't make the cut or aren't on the team for whatever reason, who's one of them that you think, like, really would be a key addition to the squad? I mean, I can't tell you who wouldn't. Like, that. I mean, I just got a lot of respect for the guys that uh, we asked to play. They just – I mean, they couldn't. You know, uh, if I just went down the line of four people, like, Devin Ebanks would be an amazing help. I mean, he's six foot nine, can shoot the ball from extremely deep, tons of NBA, you know, uh, experience, tons of overseas experience. Like, he could do literally everything that any of our guards can do. So it'd be awesome to have somebody like that on the team. Uh, Joe Alexander is just uh, an amazing basketball player and a sick athlete. Like, it, it doesn't hurt to be six nine and athletic on our team. We need all the help we can get with that. Al drew off a six foot six guy who's Probably averages more, like he averages more. He's averaged the more assists uh, than some of our point guards that we've had in our team over the past like years. Great two guard, great shooter, six foot six. Like I said, good size, good defender. I mean, we had a lot of guys. Gary Brown, amazing year this year for uh, Jerusalem. Well, I can't even pronounce it in Turkey, but uh, an amazing year this year. Uh, played great, has been playing great every summer for a Puerto Rican national team. Like we have so many people we can we had to ask and. Sags, who plays for the who played with the Raptors, like we we got so many people we can ask, but it's just like it's yeah. tough. They got obligations, and obviously with the COVID going on around, it's not easy to just ask people to get away from their family. So it so sounds cool. like next year, you guys are not only not only you're gonna have West Virginia intramural A, you're gonna have West <laughs> West Virginia intramural B too. Uh, it's very no, I'm just <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> obviously. I mean, we could go on and on and on with guys who aren't playing, but yeah. there's a lot of good guys who are playing. Exactly. Are you kidding me? That's why I said I'm not – it's not a worry. Like, I'm excited. We have a great team. I'm excited to see the 10th seed team go out there and just play and show their potential for everybody to see. I mean, I, we're, I feel like we're a really good team. There's no way you're going to answer this, but who are you most excited to play with? On our team? Yeah. You know, the beauty, we just had the exact same team come back. So it's just like, I see these guys already. Like, you can't put a price on chemistry. So bring one guy. We brought one good new guy. And so I guess you, if you, to answer your question, to the extent, I guess I say Logan Route because I never played basketball with him. He's the only one I haven't played. Before. Everyone else has been here before. And, oh, Daxter Miles as well. Yeah. So maybe both of them. Be a so nice little tie. This is a little uh, TBT West Virginia combo question. How do you think the uh, West Virginia offense slash defense uh, run by Coach Huggins would benefit or not benefit if the Elam ending was in place in college basketball? Hmm. Defensively, I don't think – I personally don't think it would change much in his, uh, in his philosophy. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, you know – doesn't matter. Like, the Elam ending could be really soon, but if you don't let them score, it's like it's, – it doesn't matter. Like, you know – and uh, offensively, uh, maybe, I don't know. We weren't uh, – when I was in college, we weren't the greatest three-point shooting team. We were more, like, mid-range and finished in size. So, I mean, it just depends, like, what the match will be. Like I said, it's, it's tough to even add it to college because there's so many pro rules that should be added that aren't – like, I couldn't even literally fathom what the Elam ending would look like in college with the way certain teams style of play and – Press Virginia, maybe. I don't know. It could be good for a team like, like that Hugs had like that. But, like, my time in college, we're a, half t we're a half court basketball team. It'd be tough. There'd be teams like Wisconsin who wouldn't get to the Elam yeah, ending the whole year. Exactly. The whole year. <laughs> and just sit there like, yo, we got to outscore you? Like, it's like, like, like that. Like, not outscore you. Of course, everyone has to outscore everybody. But it's like, you know, it's a little different when, you know, your, your goal is to, like, score as a team as opposed to, like, some teams just use strictly defense and then there's the hybrid teams that are – 
talented enough to do both. Recruit. It would be tough to, you know, have like in college, it'd be fun to see, but it would be tough as a college team to have to play to a target score just because you see it so often. And it's probably one of the biggest mistakes in college is teams just get into survival mode. And like, they try to, they try not to lose more than they try to win. Well, exactly. So like you'll be sitting there for an hour. Imagine you remember the Big East, uh, the UConn and uh, Syracuse. You'll be watching those all the time. Yeah, It'll be just, like not, it was just it would be midnight you know, overtime, which doesn't game exist. started at eight. It's midnight now. We're sitting here. <laughs> well, you wouldn't be able to figure that out with the with the different times. You'd be like game started at eight. I mean, said I, I would have been there early. <laughs> 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 I'd have been there an hour before, and I'm like, all right, cool. I'll figure, I guess I'll wait here. So I'll warm up a little so, bit, uh, get some popcorn or something. I, I'm patient. <laughs> so another thing that is awesome in, in TBT is like what you mentioned, you know, you guys have a lot of chemistry. That's obviously a huge advantage. Do you think there's other advantages? Like you look at a team like big X, which has a lot of young guys, guys who are, are getting ready to really try to make the NBA or start their careers. Do you think they have a, an advantage over some of the older teams? Oh, every is advantage everywhere you look. I mean, speed kills. Being young helps your energy. If your energy is there and in the right place, and you got the right coach, and I mean everything. I mean, it's very possible that you know you can run an older team out of the building. Uh, the basketball falls many ways, so it doesn't. It's very possible for that to be a, a scenario. It's very possible for chemistry to work. It's very possible for the guys that have won it for the like four, three times to be a little bit uh you know, gel a little bit better as well, or just be experienced or have that, uh, you know, that experience in general. So, I mean, it, anything can win it. It just has to be uh, the timing and everything has to work. It has to click. Every, the watching those games last year was a lot of fun because, you know, I knew a lot of those guys and just seeing those games and watching who, uh, freaking, I can't even think of the names now. I'm over here talking about watching the games. But, like, uh, <laughs> Like watching some of these guys play, David Lighty. There we go. Watching David Lighty play and seeing how well he played and then seeing him carry how well he played in the summer into his like year this year it was like a lot of fun. I mean, and then you, I can stem back to the TBT and like place it there and say, not to say David Lighty wasn't a good basketball player, but like I played against him and he was, he did good. But just seeing him, I felt like he got way better. And then, and seeing him play this year, I mean, it shows. So our guy Seth Greenberg who we had on the show last week he said no chance a young team can win the TBT you want to you want to go back I'm not going to fight with I'm not going to fight with a guy that, that that wins these arguments all the time um is a chance in anything is it a high chance I mean I don't know I mean there's still a lot for young guys to learn about playing pro basketball as a as a whole anyway so I mean that could be that that's it's, it's, it just depends you know what game is being called you know, if these guys, these older guys play physical, is it going to be t touchy calls? Are gonna, you know, everything is the basketball no game. Cares. It just depends on how it goes. So, <laughs> Well, you've, yeah, you've, but, you've played before. So yeah. how do you think that – and you've, you've played everywhere. So yeah. how do you think that TBT – and we love asking this because there's guys that come from all over the world, really, to play in TBT. So we love asking, how do you think TBT compares to your other pro experiences? I would say TBT is right up there in a sense where like we have these guys that play where I play and they come back home and play at home in this tournament. I mean, this is the tournament for guys. If you're not playing summer league and you don't have anything exclusively locked in with the NBA or a job overseas where you can't, you know, risk it because you've signed a contract and you're still in between waiting for jobs. So, and so this is the best basketball you can play. I mean, and who doesn't want to come back home and play? Like, these guys are all guys that are gone basically overseas or playing the G League, wherever they may be. And who doesn't like playing back at home in the summer, anywhere? Like, it's that's what we do. You know, it's in a sense, it's like we're contractors and this is like our job. We come out here, we're playing, we're, we enjoy the play. We love what we do. We love work, working. We're working right now with you guys at this tournament. Like, it's, it's going to be a lot of fun. Last year was a lot of fun. I don't expect anything different this year. And then in, in some cases, not only are you coming home to play, you get to, your family gets to watch you play and stuff. You, in some cases, like you, you get to play with your teammates and your best friends again. What, is, yeah, exactly. what does it mean to put on the West Virginia jersey again? Well, I mean, it's fun to just suit up with the guys, man. These are guys that I, I have a, a really good bond with outside of basketball. So 
just getting the opportunity to play ball with the guys that I played with before is fun. And then also playing with the guys that are like younger than me. Like it was fun playing with Jawan Staten. Like I never got a chance to do that. Obviously I'm older now. So watching him play in college, was like, Oh wow. Like he's an amazing point guard. So to actually get a chance to play them. Tons of fun. Uh, Jay Sean page and, and, and Tariq and like all these guys, like they're talented guys. And you know, you always wish you can play on teams. Like our, our team was good, but you always wish, oh, I wonder what it'd be like to play with these guys and play basketball with these guys. So it's just like, damn, like I get the opportunity this summer because you guys, you know, open the platform for that. So, As someone with, you know, final four experience like yourself, uh, <laughs> do you, do you want to go on the record and guarantee a final four appearance from best Virginia? I mean, I, I hate guaranteeing things. I mean, it just makes me look absolutely stupid if they don't come true or a guy that just runs his mouth. I'm just very excited at what I think our chances are. So, I mean, I feel comfortable. I feel happy that I'm getting ready to play with the guys I'm playing ball with. And I'm looking forward to our first game and then hopefully a second one. And we just take it a game at a time. I just can't predict that because that the slap in the face is just the return is <laughs> you just you, sound ridiculous. You all heard it here first. <laughs> See, that's what I, and that's <laughs> the line you never want to hear. To the final four. <laughs> and that's the line you never want. You hear it. You heard it here first. He's I got to in it. I got to be fully transparent with you. We had a, uh, we had John Elmore on the show. Yeah, I already. Yeah, that's nice. We're big herd that fans. I don't know who we're going to be taking in that game, who we're going to be rooting for. You got to, you got to, you got to pitch to us a little bit. Why should we be best Virginia fans this summer? I mean, I don't, I, I really can't tell you why you should like us. I mean, the, the, the herd, heard that one their first game last year, right? I, they were like the they were a West they Virginia. Were, yeah, team. they had a different name. This is the first year. They yeah. Oh, so that. but they're but the majority of the team. I mean, so it's like you. The majority of the team was on another team last year, right? Yeah. Yeah. They, yeah and they awesome. made it. They made it to the uh, to, to the, the next final. Like, right? fi- yeah, but they made it to the final twenty four this year, which is really impressive. Yeah, yeah definitely. That's what I'm, I I think they they're gonna be a good team. I'm excited. I don't. I don't want to. Like I told you earlier, I don't feel like that's a rivalry for me. Like I don't. Who is, know, who is I don't West know the rival? Uh, you talk, you're talking about like the college rivals. Yeah. I mean, I think what it's like Pitt and Marshall is the uh, is the Ooh. rival, but these guys are no, not the, all Marshall, right? 12, in the Big Twelve, who is? Oh, in the Big Twelve. Yeah. So Pitt is still that. I don't even think we've been in the Big Twelve long enough to have a rival. Really? I think we pick our we pick our our things now is like Texas, and uh, and I guess it's like Kansas. But is it really a Kansas rivalry because they? Kansas, like, it's so it's it's different. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a big twelve, and I kind of don't look at this team because it's not the Marshall alumni team. So I can't really look at it as a rivalry game. I mean, there's Marshall guys that played in the tournament last year, and then there's some new guys there. Yeah, no, I, I, I've. It's so funny because teams just change conferences all willy nilly now. You know, yeah. like, I'm a Big Ten guy. And I still can't believe that Maryland and Rutgers are in the Big Ten, and we played them in the Big years, Ten. It's like years. the New Jersey teams in the Big Ten. It's, it's yeah, strange. exactly. So it's the same. <laughs> you, probably, you probably can't believe that these guys are going to and playing Texas Tech. It's it's a. I took that trip. I was a GA the first year that West Virginia was uh, in the Big Twelve. So uh, I, I had to take those trips. It's like it sucks, where The games are eight o'clock, or excuse me, nine o'clock. Big like the Big Ten time. <laughs> Oh, yeah. classic, nine o'clock, classic. nine o'clock, nine o'clock your time, and uh, freaking um, what do you call it? We get back home. It's like three in the morning, four in the yeah. morning, and then the guys got to go to class. I we got to be there for running or something like. It's just like oh my gosh, when we play in the Big East, we were just going like an hour up the road or something like that. Wait, um, when you were a GA, how did Hugs compare as uh as a coach when you were a coach versus when you were a player? Was he he must have just been all time as a Coach the coach. Really. No, it was, it's, it's the same thing. Like, when you have coaches like this, it's like these guys have seen so much basketball and seen so many funny things. Like, this stuff's, like, off the top of their head. But, like, Coach Huggins, like, I, when I was a GA, it was crazy to see how much uh, – how positive he was about what the guys did, like, in past tense. Like, he would talk about – guys like me and you talk about guys that were on that 2010 team to these younger guys 
and then I can sit there and remember, I'm like, wow, I never heard him say that to, to these guys. <laughs> like, it wasn't, it's like, oh, they can't guard anybody. Get him off these guys. And then he's like, they got his ass to that line. And I was like, wait a minute, I never, I didn't make it. I remember you vividly telling me that I was one of your worst defenders. <laughs> so to tell other guys that, yeah, he tried, it was like, I wish I, I wish you'd have said that. That would have been dope to, <laughs> so we You're always just- tease Huggins about that. You're sitting there. He's talking about how great you guys were, and all you could think about is is your is the, 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 the sprints, <laughs> the treadmills, and the sprints. I'm sitting there like, wait, what? We were I, I keep, what? We, you never we were killing me. it apparently, and we didn't even, and we were winning too. So it was just like we're killing it apparently. We didn't even know. Like it just seemed like we were. It was a, a treadmill day after a treadmill day. You know. I just remember when guy. we were. It's it's the all coaches are the same because we started out eight and zero in the Big Ten. And we were, like, top ten in the country, and everyone was, you know, loving us. The whole campus loves us for the first time ever, right? And first Coach time Holman, ever. he walks in and to basically tells us, hey, just a reminder, fellas, you guys ain't shit still. So, oh, you know, it's every coach. Bring it down. <laughs> it's just <laughs> – you kidding me? <laughs> I'm going to take, uh, take you across the world with this, uh, with this next question. Literally oh, across the world. Fun. So, do I have – know the time or can we are we just like no no you don't have <laughs> time yeah time i don't zone have to know like is this a country time give me the time zone and i i'm curious <laughs> about your your experience so far in israel yeah what's the, what about it well i i lived there for a summer i lived there for like two and a half months yeah. and i loved it it was incredible so i'm just curious your opinion on it and how you've enjoyed it and or what you've not liked so far um this is my second year there. Um, the people, first of all, when you go overseas, if you've never been overseas, I remember like just going overseas for the first time, you can really be in countries where you'll not have a conversation with anybody except for the people on the team. Like you will go in stores, you can ask people where things are. They're going to be like, I don't know what to talk to you about and just keep walking. <laughs> so the beauty of Israel is that that was never the case. Literally, everyone there spoke English for the most part, unless they were extremely, extremely old. But then even then, those people understood English so that they can tell us where to go if we needed things. Like, so being able to speak English was a plus. The basketball was great. The people I spent time around, like this was the first time that, uh, that I heard about Shabbat, obviously. I had no idea what that oh, whole aspect was. Huh? I said, shout out Shabbat. Love yeah, you. shout out to Shabbat, because that's something I actually am inst- instilling in our family, like a Friday, Saturday, Friday night, Saturday, more, like the entire Saturday. We just don't do anything. We chill. I think that's a good, it, it, it breeds good family values. So like learning about their customs over there was like a lot of fun. Um, I'm allowed and- to say this because uh, we're Jewish. You got the, uh, you got the rabbi beard going. Oh, bro. This is just me not, I'm, well, obviously we're in the, 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 the midst of this dangerous uh, breathing air or whatever. So I, I haven't been able to go get a, a haircut, obviously. But I kept this out there as well because it's just not – you can't just find great barbers everywhere. It's not – Yeah, it's not that easy. Everywhere. Especially it's not, not easy. To, that's a not, not, especially with this hair. It's not the easiest thing sometimes to find. I well, found and, a – <laughs> oh, When ahead. I was there, when I was there, I found a good one with, like, good reviews on, on Yelp. Or whatever. Yeah, well, I was living in Bear Shaver. Like, I was in the bottom of yeah. the map. Yeah. Like, we had one guy there who was pretty solid, but then most of the guys were like, they weren't used to cutting, you know, the, the black guy's hair is not the easiest <laughs> to cut if you don't have the proper tools. It's not, a, it's not easy. So, well, I got my hair cut uh, and it literally looked like he cut one hair and he was like, $90. I'm like, $90? You cut one of my shackles or whatever it is. Yeah, it's shackles. That was fun. That's the only thing I hated. I was losing. The money. <laughs> well, I can imagine you can't, you can't. You can't figure out the time zones. You definitely can't figure out the shekels to dollars. I'm over here just sitting there, like, all right, listen, I keep this much here and just get rid of everything else. <laughs> did you did you get a chance to to visit any other places? Did you? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like, we, Israel's like once again, it's like one of those. It's a smaller country, like you know, Belgium or something like that. The size of and, New Jersey. No, I mean, eh, maybe. No, literally, yeah. right, Andrew? Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's it's tiny. That's crazy. That's pretty yeah. tiny. No, I yeah, don't think it's like, the yeah. size of New Jersey's not like six hours long. I, I mean, I'm just saying. Uh, what about like, up in what about no top to bottom either? It's not six hours top to bottom either. All right. Well, so, I'm sorry. Just throwing it up. Don't beat yourself up. We're just. I just wanted to be accurate. Anyway, I just. <laughs> I'll do some I just <laughs> <Keep going. laughs> no, but uh, 
literally, um, go, we, we drove everywhere. Like we had the, the basketball community is very small. I mean, not, I mean, it's big, but it's like, you know, these guys, like I've seen these guys. It's like, I might not know an Israeli person that's over there, but Oh, it's my, I know that guy I played basketball against him before. So you get a rapport with certain people, you know, where, where not to go things you can and can't do. So like, it's not like you're over there completely alone. And there's guys that have been there for years. Like, you know, they live over there and make careers over there. So like, Amari Stoudemire. exactly. And it's always good to have these guys on your team that can uh, coach you and put you in the right direction if you're willing to listen. So <laughs> some people aren't. So it's not it. I have some news. <laughs> I, yeah. I have some news. Um, as a comparison, the land currently controlled by the state of Israel is not much larger than 27 thousand square kilometers or oh, shit. You 10, might really be accurate about this, huh? Israel was 8,000 square miles or 20,000 square kilometers just barely bigger than New Jersey. Wow. Just barely is 8.1 isn't 8. <laughs> I'm going to take I'm going to take my small victory and just walk up. <laughs> just hey, that's it's the best the comparison stuff. I could find. That's actually you were basically point whatever off you're, that's perfect. Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't just think of that. I had heard that before. You threw that out there and then just fact checked. That's all it was. I had heard that. You see what I got? Oh, heard that. I got one final Israel question, then we won't talk about it. Have you, <laughs> been, to, have you been to the beach clubs in Tel Aviv? I've been, yeah, I've pretty much been almost uh, everywhere in Tel Aviv. It's, ni- it's a nice city. And it's like, it's almost like the place that everybody goes. It's like pretty far away from where I was. But at the same time, it's, these are like towns surrounding the big city, like the yeah. Miami of their country in a sense. So, you know, everybody's going to be there basically. It's like the 13th grade. It's like, you're going to see everybody, you know, and that you played against. They're all going to be in the same place every time. So it's like, yeah, Shall maybe I'll down. skip this weekend. <laughs> it's like, I've seen enough of the big, same people. Big time. Shout out to Israel. <laughs> this is the Israel episode. That's pretty exciting. I, Wait, no, no, it really- it's a lot of fun. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I got the wrong conception about, like, the misconception about a, this league before I went. Going there, playing for Jerusalem, like, it was a I, – I learned so much from some of the greatest coaches I've actually got a chance to play for and play against. Great players. Like, it was – it was overall, it was just, like, a, a great experience, which made me want to go back the second year. It was just – it was fun. Are you going to give Amari a call to come play on Best Virginia? Uh, probably not. I thought – He's he's a busy man. I probably won't, he won't answer me probably either. <laughs> that was my real reason. He won't answer my calls. <laughs> all right. So something that we like to do, which we do with all of our guests, and it really determines whether or not we enjoy the interview or not, depending on the outcome of this. Oh, shit. This is <laughs> we like to let our, we like to let our <laughs> guest ask us a question or two. So the floor is yours. All right. Let's see. What do you think made the TBT se- select the seedings that they did? I can answer do that you one. Think that, I do you, every single exactly. I feel like that question is not a – because I kind of feel – yeah, go ahead. No, no. I, I was just going to say, there are clearly – they are puppeteers. In That's what I was asking. Is there, is there more story than seeding, or is it like a mixture? It is a co- it's like, got to be a combination of both. We don't know. Yeah, that. exactly. No exactly. Clue. Exactly. We're not that intertwined with everything that's going on. <laughs> exactly. But, I mean, like, it used to be regional, you know? So, like, uh-huh. the Columbus region had the Dayton teams and the Columbus teams and the Midwest yeah, yeah, yeah. teams, you know? So, like, that, they had no choice but to have that. But now it's like, we're going to still put your team together. Exactly. Yeah. I didn't know that was regional before. I thought that, that's interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that at all, actually. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it's a combination of both. All right, but I, I agree. I think it's a combination of both. But I also think, like, the top, the top eight seeds, you could argue, are the, top, are the top eight teams. You know, you definitely could argue that you guys are in there, too. You could, you could make an argument about a bunch of the other teams. But I really do think that the top, top teams are in the, are in the, are in the buys or close to it with you guys being the 10 seed right there also. Who do you think is going to win? And you're, See, everybody gets a vote. People Go are going to get people are going to get sick of us of us saying this because we always get asked that. So you know, maybe, but we do like the question. I'll, I'll go first, Joe. So this is what I've been saying: If Joe Johnson is playing at Joe Johnson level, overseas elite is going to be tough to, to beat. beat. Mm, very but much so. At the same time, like we always say, until Carmen's crew loses, it's tough for us not to say that they're yeah. the favorite. All right. 
Um, adding on to that, who's your dark horse? Heard and that. Who has no chance? Dark horse has heard that. Heard that, dark horse. I, I appreciate you. I'm going to talk to you immediately after the game, so that's going to be perfect. I want to have this conversation now. I want to be on the podcast you can, again. You can FaceTime me, and I'll record it. Oh, perfect. This is, this is the dream. Uh, this is a dream for me. This is great. Um, I guess for me to answer your question, I've always been saying that it's kind of like Bayheim's army's turn just because they've been in it for 55 years and haven't won yet. Yeah. So that's, that's my answer. Um, in terms of dark horse teams – yeah, I think like there's something about the money team. I don't know what it is. But, like, <laughs> is Floyd, Floyd playing? That's my last question. <laughs> no, Floyd is not playing. We talked oh, to we sucks. talked to Jordan Crawford yesterday. It was actually on today's episode that came out today. We had a great interview with him, and he just got us pumped up about the money team. Which yeah, yeah, and they said that really, please enlighten me. Enlighten me on what was uh, what was said, and I have to actually I could just go watch or listen. I'm pretty yeah, sure no, that's he, your second round matchup if you guys win, right? Yeah, I know, which is that's why I was asking about the puppeteers and so on and so forth. Um, and <laughs> wow, that would be a good game. Best for no, really would be. I'm excited. I, I, trust me, when I tell you when I saw when I saw the the seed in and I saw who we could possibly play as long as we take care of business, like I was excited because I mean we get to play against Another team out of West Virginia, which is awesome, is something for our fans and the people that live in the state to get to, to get to see, which is awesome, especially in the fourth of July. Like they'll they'll be going crazy probably. And, <laughs> and then and then after that we get to play and play against Floyd Mayweather's team. That's like, I mean, what can I ask for? I mean, this is a, a, a great opportunity. And then if we win that game, we get the opportunity to play the team that beat us like I mean, I just you guys have done so much for us. I what it's can not I ask for? Not us. <laughs> but a TBT I, as a brand. The TBT as a brand. Not just not just you personally. I don't, I'll say I don't think this. You had though. anything to do with the uh, the CD. <laughs> I'll say I'll say this though. If it was regional, like it was supposed to be, yeah. I think there would have been potential for you to play. Heard that in this round. Either of- way, I was about to say. So even even if the strings were pulled or not pulled, whatever, we were going to see these guys either way, and I wouldn't want to duck anybody. Right. It we'll seems like it game. was just a fast forward of the first few rounds for some of the matchups, which is essentially what would have happened based on the regions. Like Big X playing Carmen's group exactly. in the second round is just a fast forward to the round of 24. Like get to it round. I'm excited. If you fun. could play any team, like you, even if it's not for the championship, you can play any team in the bracket. Is it going to be overseas elite because they knocked you guys out? Uh, I don't care that, I mean, people win games every day. I don't care if they knock this out, but I mean, it'd be fun to play him again, especially with Joe Johnson. That'd be intriguing. Is uh, I the one thing I can't remember uh, what team was it? Was Heinz's team in it this year or not? Yeah, there. That's my. So you were gonna. That's who I want to. Uh, that's who I wish we could play. Like a warm up game, because just a uh, chance. They're not even near us, so it'd be fun to like if we could meet somewhere and just get a warm up game. That'd be fun. You don't think you'll be able to do any scrimmages in Columbus in that in that quarantine period? I think we can. It's just a matter of people. It's just a matter of people, like, you know, conversing with each other. It's just who and taking it seriously, who too. And, yeah. Huh? I say, and taking it seriously, too. Exactly. I, I just – I don't know. It just depends on who feels like being the bigger man and say, hey, you guys want to get a game? Like, as opposed to just staring at each other for, for an hour and a half. Yeah, like, you guys have been yeah, playing 2K for, for six hours like, straight. You're like, does anyone want to play some real basketball? Yeah, or? it's just like, oh. come on. Like, that'd be fun. I would love to. No. So. Well, the Haas team, that'd be fun to play against those guys. Like – like, I, there's some very talented people over there. That I, I would love to just, you know, see where, see where that will lead. DB, we appreciate you coming on. You like that little nickname I just came up with, DB? I mean, it wouldn't be the first time I heard it, but <laughs> once again, though, no, I'm glad that you used it. So, yeah. Well, DB, yeah. we appreciate you coming on. We will definitely be talking to you during the tournament in some way or another. You're going to get a FaceTime me from me at 4 a.m. and be like, Definitely hey, you're playing. The, especially you're playing. after the first game. <laughs> especially after the first game. I'm going to call you and wake you up before the first game so you're not ready for it. Uh, I don't – you know my phone's on silent. I'm, All right. Fair <laughs> but seriously, man, thank you. This has been a lot of fun. Looking forward to uh, watching you guys play this summer and having you on again soon. Andrew, Joey, I appreciate you guys having me on, man. It'd be awesome if you guys could do our show again. It'd be, to- it'd be pretty cool. We're in. Yeah, Seriously, I'm dead serious. <laughs> we'll figure it out. We'll come on Final Forecast if you want us on. We, I just asked you. I begged you just now in front of, We're in. In, in front in. of your audience. Sure. Basically, I'm We're doing. in. We're in. Here. Perfect. Handshake. Three-way handshake. handshake. There you go. Bam. All right. You guys I'll are give you the, first. I'll give you the time that's going to be for, for you. <laughs>
Not, right. I won't just throw out a random time. And, you know I'm going to text you the hour before and be like, all right, man, you ready? Let's do it. Here we go. We're Such in. a jerk. <laughs> Such a jerk, bro. All right. I uh, appreciate you, you man. guys, man. Seriously. You guys have a good night. All right. You too.